It's now 7 p.m. on Thursday, November 19th, 2015, and I call this meeting of the Bellevue Planning Commission to order. Please join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Harbin, will you please take roll? Madden. Jacobson. Here. Smith. Here. Gladback. Here. Kane. Here. Ackley. Here. Casey. Here. Sykes. Here. Ritz. Here. Thank you. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act, a copy of which can be found in the back vestibule of this hearing room. At this time, I would ask that all commissioners and audience members, please silence or turn off your cell phone, pagers, or any other devices that could disrupt our proceedings. Thank you. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to revise or approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes for September 24th, 20, 2015, regular meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a uh, motion to approve the minutes as presented for the September 24th, 2015 meeting. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Jacobson and a second by Ms. Smith. Commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. At this time, I'd entertain a motion, or excuse me, I'd like to accept into the record all staff reports, attachments, memos, and handouts regarding each application. Any updates, Mr. Sucha? No, there are not. Our next item on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. We need a motion, please, to accept uh, all reports. Motion to approve as presented. Second. A motion by Mr. Ackley, second by Mr. Gladback. Please vote. All in favor, motion carried. We have no consent agenda items this evening, so we'll move on to our public hearings. We have four public hearings this evening, and for each, I will announce the case and then ask if there are any updates from the planning department. After that, the applicant will have an opportunity to present the request. After the applicant has been heard, the public will be allowed to provide any testimony they would like considered in the record. Those testifying should come to the podium, state their name, spell their name, and sign in for the record. Testimony will be limited to three minutes, and I reserve the right to shorten that time if we have a large number of people coming forward to testify. We request that individuals wishing to make similar or like comments of support or dissent on an item appoint a spokesperson to make their points for them. That person will receive more time. After any testimony is taken, the applicant shall have the opportunity for a rebuttal, after which we will close the public hearing. The bottom line, please treat others who are speaking in the same manner as you would like to be treated when speaking. Our first public hearing this evening is a request to annex lots one and two LGB properties, applicant Dave Llewellyn, location 36th Street and Sheraton Road. Staff, any updates? No, there are not. If the applicant is here, I'd invite him to step forward and present the request. Good evening, Council, and thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I come before you to get approval for the rezoning of lots one, two, and three. Would uh, you please state your name for us? David Llewellyn. Ms. Llewellyn, this is just for the annexation portion of it. So just address your annexation request, and then after the commission deals okay. with the annexation, we'll come back and have a public hearing on the rezoning and the sub subdivision. Okay. So the annexation is to make it, uh, right now I have, uh, it's not part of the city, so we're trying to annex it to get it uh, compliant to the city code. I have a house that is at address 13510. 
uh, South 36th Street that I'm trying to uh, sell, and I want to sell some of that with the existing property that I have. So that's the purpose of the annexation. Thank you. If anyone cares to provide public testimony on this matter, the matter of annexation of these properties, whether in favor or in opposition, please come forward and state your name and sign in. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and turn it over to the commissioners. Reminder, commissioners, we're only voting on the annexation or discussing the annexation. Any, any, any comments? comments? Okay. <laughs> With that, if there's uh, no um, no questions, I would move to um, I, re I would request to, or I would move to a request or move to approve the annexation of lots one and two LGB properties, as stated in the documents. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Gladbeck. Second. And a second by Mr. Casey. Any discussion? What a, okay, commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. Our second public hearing is a request to rezone lots one through three LGB properties, replat one, being a replat of lots one and two. LGB properties in tax lot 1B1 located in the southeast one-fourth of section 8 T13N the uh, R13E of the 6th prime meridian Sarpy County Nebraska from AG RA and RG28 to RA RE and RG28 for the purpose of existing residential development and a small subdivision plats lots one through three LGB properties replat one applicant Dave Llewellyn general location 36th Street and Sheridan Road case numbers Z-1510-07 and S-1510-23 Mr. Llewellyn, staff, any updates on this? No, there are not. Again, my name is Dave Llewellyn. My address is 13472 South 36th Street. And as you have the information before you, again, I'm trying to annex uh, the property and then to replat this so I can sell off an existing house that I have with additional acreage. Mr. Llewellyn, did you sign in? Thank you. Any other comments, sir? Nope. If anyone cares to provide public testimony on this matter, whether in favor or in opposition to, please come forward, state your name, and sign in. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. What are the wishes of the commission? Question for staff. Based on the, the topography and the trees and things already growing there, is lot two as proposed, is there development area there and they would be accessed then from Sheridan Road? Lot two, as you see from the aerial, it would probably be limited as to where it could be built upon. Um, mainly back in this area here, behind the existing other, the other existing house on 36th Street. So it would be a limited area. And there is an existing access easement that was platted previously um, with the original plat of LGB properties for access to this property. So it would become, it would come off of Sheridan. You know, flat. And that, that's, that's what this is here. Thank you. Anyone?
Anyone else, commissioners? There's no further discussion. I'd be prepared to make a motion. Mr. Ackley? I move that we recommend approval of the replatting based upon conformance with the zoning ordinance and subdivision regulations, as well as a lack of perceived negative impact upon the surrounding area. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Ackley for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Jacobson. That a motion also include the rezoning? Correct. Replatting and rezoning. Mr. Jacobson, all right. Any further discussion? Commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. This will go before the City Council on January 11th, 2016. Our third public hearing is a request to rezone lots 1 through 144 and outlets A through F, Fairview South 2, being a platting of part of tax lot 2C and tax lot 3 located in the north one half of section 15, T13 North, R13 East of the six prime meridian, Sarpy County, Nebraska from AG to RS-72 for the purpose of single family residential development and preliminary plat lots 1 through 144 and out lots A through F, Fairview South 2. Applicants, Celebrity Homes, General Location, Tregaron Drive and Pilgrim Drive. Case number Z-1509-06 and S-1509-11. Any updates? And I see the applicant has come forward. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. Brian Doyle, 11440 West Center Road, uh, here on behalf of Celebrity Homes, the applicant. Uh, we're here today on a uh, rezoning from AG to RS72 uh, for 144 single family home sites uh, and six outlots uh, for drainage way purposes and for water quality basins. Uh, RS-72 zoning uh, is the same zoning of the adjacent uh, properties. Uh, we believe it's compatible uh, and consistent with those uh, adjacent properties. Uh, we believe it meets all the requirements of the comprehensive plan and is in conformance with your zoning requirements. Um, also here with me today is John Coolidge from Lamper Nearson, who is the project engineer. Uh, if there are any questions, we'd be happy to answer any of them. Thank you. We'll have questions after the hearing. If there is anyone wishing to give public testimony on this matter, whether in favor of or in opposition to, please come forward, state your name, and sign in. Seeing no one, I'll now close the public hearing and turn it over to the commissioners. Questions for staff. Um, number seven in your commentary, uh, you indicated that a large community park is planned to the east of this property. Uh, in your discussions with the developer, where is that approximately located at and where is the access to that park from? When, when the um, Colonial Point Apartments came in, um, which are this area here. Uh, we, we looked at this uh, area on, on a larger scale and knew that land would develop next to the school, um, further south toward Haida Hills. And we came up with a couple um, requirements or criteria for the development of this uh, area. <coughs> One of those was the road network um, collector streets. We, we do have, and I'll, I'll get to the park, um, a collector street here, which is the street in Fairview South too, mm -hmm. and then another one that will be over on this side coming out of Haida Hills uh, for when the rest of Haida Hills develops and then this area here develops. Um, and then we also looked at the park requirement for the area and um, instead of having several developments with small parks, we 
said we'd put a, a bigger park kind of in the middle of the development right in this area. Um, and obviously we'll have access to, from the apartment, there's a, um, a si sidewalk trail coming out of Ferry South. There is a trail that will um, be adjacent over here and that, that is on your, your plat as well. Um, here's, there's this one that comes out of Pilgrim's Landing through this outlot, uh, through this outlot to the park area over here. Uh, there will be frontage uh, when this area to the east develops as well. Okay, so that is north of the, uh, the trail line, proposed trail, okay. Yes, it, it's, there it is, okay. Any other discussion? Other question for staff. Um, when would you anticipate those collector streets would go in? My reason for that question is the concern with the amount of traffic that's going to try to access out onto Fairview. I would uh, suspect most of that traffic is going to want to go to Offit or north on 75. The, the, this street is a collector street as part of this development. So as they uh, do the infrastructure improvements on that, that will be installed um, prior to any I'd say prior to any housing being built there. And that's the one that goes up to Tregaron in the school, next to the school. The, the other one, let me go back to the overall picture. Th this one will just be whenever this area here develops. And it comes out of Haida Hills. And again, this one, we don't know when that might develop for, for residential other uses. But this section of it here is part of this development and will be built with this development. Another <clears throat> question for staff, if I may, regarding the traffic signal, it says that there's pretty much just kind of saying that this development would need to contribute in the future if it becomes necessary to put in the signal. How are you quantifying or you know, establishing that now so that if that happens, you have something to go back on to have, make sure it does happen? That would be part of the subdivision agreement. And how would you do, how would you determine the percentages? That, I'm, I'm, I would leave that up, I'll say, to the county um, based on contributions from of traffic and number of vehicles. Ferry Road is a county road, and it would probably be, unless we annex it, and in that case, we would do it, uh, but it would be, a, I would say, a distribution of traffic generation from the subdivisions. And is something like that included in the subdivision agreement then? Uh, um, just to, clar are. just to clarify it now so there's not any question later. Um, I, I'm going to say I don't think those the details are in the subdivision agreement at this point. We can look at that prior to the final plat when the subdivision agreement goes to the council. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to ask a question, make a comment? What are the wishes of the commission? Well, if everybody else is going to be shy, I'm prepared to make a motion. Yeah. Mr. Ackley. <laughs> I would move for approval of the rezoning and preliminary plat based upon conformance with zoning ordinance, comprehensive plan, and the subdivision regulations and compatibility with the adjacent residential development. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Ackley for approval with a second by Mr. Sykes. Any other discussion? Commissioners, please vote. All in favor, motion carried. And this will go before the City Council for public hearing on January 11th, 2016. Our fourth public hearing is a request to rezone lots one through 292 and out lots B through D, Liberty, 
Being a replat of lot one, part of lot two, and out lot B, Daniel's Farm Edition, together with part of tax lot 19, lying north of New Cape Heart Road, <coughs> excuse me, except right of way located in the southwest one fourth of section five, T13 North, R13 East of the sixth prime meridian, Sarpy County, Nebraska, from AG and RS72 to RS72 PUD for the purpose of single family residential development and preliminary plat lots one through 292 and out lots B through D Liberty. Applicant Liberty Land LLC, general location 43rd Street and Cape Hart Road. Case numbers Z1509-05 and S-1509-10. Any updates? No, they're not. Is the applicant would like to come forward? Ladies and gentlemen of the commission, Douglas Streeson, 10836 Old Mill Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant, um, Liberty Land LLC. What we propose uh, tonight is 292 lot um, subdivision. We'll, <coughs> we plan on developing it in phases. At this time, we're thinking probably four phases. Uh, as you can see, there's an arterial connection coming in on the south end from Cape Heart Road that will continue north through a traffic circle and tie into the existing Quail Creek subdivision uh, in two locations. There are two traffic circles in the subdivision. Uh, there's a street that ties off to the east um, to the existing veterans home there. Uh, the phasing will develop in essentially a counterclockwise fashion starting in the lower uh, right hand corner of what you see and and working our way around um, until we come out um, in the <coughs> in the southwest corner uh, much of this land is is being replatted from the daniels farm edition there's a large regional park to the east uh, there's an outlot um, with a lot of timber to it on the west that we we intend to leave pretty much intact. Um, we're, we're also uh, going to acquire the abandoned right away and the little triangle owned by the church in the southwest corner to kind of clean that area up uh, in, and include it in the subdivision. Um, We've got the SID attorney here, Mr. Robert Huck, and the developer, Danny Van Morligan, here. We'd be happy to answer any questions you all might have. Thank you. Thank you. We may have questions after the public hearing. I am going to, uh, I'm assuming that most of our audience members are here to express concerns or to listen to concerns or information about this particular item since there was no one who spoke at the other public hearings. Um, how many members of our audience would be interested in providing public testimony on this matter, whether in favor of or opposition to? May I see a raise of hands? Okay, thank you. Um, if we would request that if you all have similar comments or someone has already made the comments that you had planned on making, that you would defer to the person who has spoken before you or something like that. It would be helpful to us. Um, if you wish to speak, please come forward, state your name, sign in. While you're signing in, um, as the chairperson mentioned earlier, testimony is limited to three minutes per person. Thank you. I will have a timer here on my own. <laughs> I um, promise not to go over three. Okay. But uh, just, just, just for anybody who speaks, um, I will 
signal with my hand and when you hit two and a half minutes and knowing your time is about up. Okay. Good evening, I'm uh, Tom Bellinger. Uh, I'm a resident of Quail Creek, 12006 Quail Drive. Uh, and I am here as a representative of the Quail Creek Neighborhood Association. Uh, on behalf of the QCNA, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak and ask questions at this planning commission meeting. Um, we appreciate the residents of Quail Creek and surrounding neighborhoods who have come tonight as well um, in support of my statements that I have tonight. Uh, as an association, we welcome the development of Liberty and look forward to having new neighbors to our south and hope that our neighborhoods can be partners in the future um, in a regional nature. We also look forward to the days of a large regional park in the area to the east of that space um, as we haven't had a park in our area in quite some time. Um, we have only a few concerns with the proposed rezoning and development plan. Um, number one, we don't have any major concerns with the streets being connected. We all knew that was an eventuality um, with those being there. Um, but traffic will undoubtedly incre increase along Quail Drive both to the north and to the south. Um, one thing that we would ask is that not only tra that their traffic controls be put in place within the Liberty Development like they've done with the um, um, roundabouts in there, but also look at the possibly making traffic controlling improvements within the Quail Creek subdivision along Quail Drive as well. Um, there's already a couple intersections where we see um, quite a bit of traffic flow through there that can maybe use some, some stop signs or some other method of, of control. Um, there's concerns from many of our residents that by increasing the number of hard surfaces and removal of some of that natural landscape uh, and a dike that was created about 30 years ago along some of that area um, that was formerly Outlot B, um, that more runoff will end up in the creeks. Lower areas of the Quail Creek already have significant erosion um, and increase an increase in and any increase in water flow into those obviously could create a significant more damage um, to those creek banks and possibly to the homes that are along there as well. Um, most of these issues, based on what we've learned from the developer, probably are resolved or, or at least are at least in being concerned or being uh, considered within their plan um, with the addition of the silt ponds and the runoff areas. Um, but we still want to make sure that we are our, our concerns with those were stated here tonight. Um, the most concerning, obviously, is that um, three and a half years ago, our neighborhood, others, and along with the city council, um, worked to create Outlot B um, with the intention of connecting that existing Outlot A, or the Outlot A that had been zoned at that time with park space to the east. And the reason that a lot of our neighborhood wanted at that Outlot there was not necessarily create a space between our neighborhood and any future development. It was to allow that the wildlife continue to be able to move freely through those spaces. So that is our concern um, with that, and we don't necessarily need it to be, or requesting that it be what it is today with a 100-foot space, because we obviously thought that was pretty significant. But with the way it has changed, we're just looking for something, a compromise of some sort of maybe like a 25 to 35-foot type of space that would allow all of that existing wildlife of turkeys and, and deer to move along through that space. Um, our goal was never to include costly concrete pathways or high-maintenance landscaping or anything like that. It's already very naturally landscaped. And a lot of our residents actually take care of that space too by keeping it clean of debris and trash and um, stuff like that. So um, that's, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? My name is John Kuser, K-U-C-E-R. My address is 12012 Pointer Circle in Quail. Um, I won't uh, echo the last speaker, but I have a different problem. I may ask for one or two extra minutes because I think it is a unique problem. When I get into uh, this, I, I think it just needs some explanation for you. Uh, having said that, uh, I uh, live on lot 133, which is the far south end on um, Pointer Circle, far south end of Quail Creek, the north side of this project. If lot B was moving forward and that wasn't an issue, I wouldn't be here talking with you. The fact that lot B may go away, I think I need to address this problem with you that exists. Uh, 26 years ago, sold all my cars, did everything I could to do the American dream and buy a lot in a house and built a house in Quail Creek. At the time of construction, uh, I walked around the lot, uh, inspected it the best I could. There was trees, there was a, a lot of debris. Uh, 
as the house was being built and the roof was going on, the builder called me over and said, I think you need to come over here and take a look. Uh, when I came, went over there and took a look, in the backyard was a very large concrete, I would say four foot by three foot inlet that did not exist on any plot plan or anything that I could see, uh, a conundrum. The builder said, basically, I guess you can walk away if you want. Uh, this wasn't on any plot plan. It, it didn't exist. You didn't know about it. We didn't know about it. It was meant for drainage coming from the farm. Uh, uh, they were putting the roof on. I was living in somebody's basement. Um, I'm just one little guy. I thought, well, they said, well, we can probably do some uh, uh, a, a, a gazebo or something, but it, it can go away. Uh, but you're not going to play football in your backyard. Oh, okay, that's fine. I, I moved forward. I could have walked away. I didn't. I wanted to be a good neighbor. The spring came. I, I moved in in December. There was no, there was no yard. Uh, spring came. They graded. They put the backyard in. Uh, the first sp spring storm came. Uh, they had graded. They had put my uh, lawn down. The first maybe one half inch rain st spring storm came. Uh, I looked out my backyard. My backyard was in the neighbors, or excuse me, the lot next door. Problem, I'll try and advance this as quick as I can. Spoke with the farmer, brought in the NRD, brought in the SID. Uh, the solution was to build a sediment basin. The only solution was, is to build a sediment basin, a berm, and piping uh, to go into this existing uh, inlet that I had. The NRD came forward and helped with this. The SID came forward. I put my skin in. I helped fund it. Uh, my responsibility after that was to maintain it, which I have for 26 years. Uh, my other obligation was to pay the farmer whatever net profit for one acre that he took out of production. I did that. I maintained it. I have maintained it. That that berm. Uh, in addition to that, the chair is granted you an extra minute. You're almost done with that, so if you can wrap it up, please. Well, what I would tell you is that there is an existing, there is an existing mutual reciprocal covenant that was filed with the county for this berm, basically saying you can't do anything, but you need to maintain it. The farm, the farmer won't do anything with this. This berm is about. 12 or 13 feet high. It's about 120 to 30 feet long. It does its job, it's done its job. It keeps that water away. Uh, my feeling is, I'm neutral on this. I, I, I don't oppose this. I will tell you, Denny and, and their uh, company, we've, we're in discussion. We're hoping we can find a solution to this. I'm hoping that happens. But I think I need to put on record my concerns with this and with this covenant. And I am very hopeful that we're going to come to, to agreement here. I, I feel that we, we are. Thank but I you. still think it's, it's my, uh, I, I still think I need, I need to bring, bring that forward to Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooser. Thank you for that information. If it's you have any questions, I'll be able to. We do have that. Your, we do have your concerns on the record. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Probably right there. I, I would think. Um, no, it's behind it. If it wouldn't it be? Hi, uh, I'm Arthur Estes. I live at 4209 Jeanette Circle. Sir, Aaron, would you spell your name for us, please? Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R, Estes, E-S-T-E-S. -E -S. Thank you. 
And uh, I have a, just a little bit of a different spin on it. Uh, I would prefer to keep the 100 feet. Um, I think that if they do, there's a, uh, they would lose a few lots on this, and, uh, but it might increase the value of the lots that are in next to that. And uh, I also don't prefer to have the, uh, the connection between the two subdivisions. Um, right now we have almost no crime, no, no theft. And part of the reason is there's only one way in and one way out of Quill Creek. And that sort of puts the damper on thieves that come in there because they know they can easily be trapped in there. It's pretty nice having it that way, so I sort of like that. I also like the wildlife being able to go up and down the 100 feet. Um, so, you know, I, I think they'd lose a few lots by keeping that 100 feet, but... Uh, I don't see it's beyond reason, and I'd rather not be connected. Um, I don't see any reason why people would want to weave through our neighborhood to get to that neighborhood versus going in through Capehart Road. Most people who do that um, want to save a little bit of distance, and then they speed through the neighborhoods when it's 25 miles an hour. I'd prefer that not to happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Johnny Patterson, J-O-H-N-N-I-E, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N, 11774 Amos Gate Drive, Lot I, on the west end. Uh, I have out lot I, or lot I, that uh, is along Lakewood Village, or Lakewood uh, Estates. And on September of 2010, Lakewood, Additionally, put more water into the stream that goes on Outlot I, which goes from one, this newest section, all the way almost down, or actually down to 42nd Street. By doing this, they've uh, tripled the water that's going down that creek right now. It's got erosion, that's one thing, I, you've got to live with that. But there's houses that's right along on the south end or the uh, north end of this our, uh, of Quail Creek that's right on the bank of that stream. And if you add more water to it than what Lakewood has put in there versus what we have coming in there now from the natural, they're going to be flooded at low end down there, and that's where the, uh, uh, right where the fire exit is. There's a fire exit road that go on from Lakewood up to or down to Quail Creek. We've got a problem. If you add more water to it, it's gonna flood. And Lakewood wasn't supposed to put that much water in there on September the 10th, but it was put in there. They've, they're only supposed to put, I believe, what naturally comes off the land to begin with, but they changed the whole stream on uh, September the, the the month of September the 10th in that area, and like I say, they've doubled or tripled the amount of water coming out of there now, coming from the new section over there instead of diverting it over toward their lakes. Uh, and I do not know the reason why they did it, but we have a problem. And if you add more water to it, which I've said before in the last meetings, those those houses down below, I believe, will get flooded. The eight-inch rain we had years ago flooded the homes down there above that and came up to it without having Lakewood in there also. And now we've really got a problem. Just for clarification, Mr. Patterson and Mr. Shuchek, can you highlight, I guess, is he talking about just next to South 48th Street? Okay, there? right where your pin is right there, that's where the stream comes in right there. Okay. They're going to add all the water coming off of the addition into that new stream. Now the Lakewood, okay, go up there where the, up right there. Okay, that's where Lakewood started putting more water in right there. Exactly right there. And if you add, and right there's where I own all the way down to almost 42nd Street. So now, uh, 
I don't know what to tell you, but you're going to add all that extra water to it from, you know, there used to be farm ground. This used to go into the ground. It won't be. It'll go from the sidewalks to the, to right straight into that stream. We're going to have a big runoff. And then to the new development coming up on the south end, they're going to develop it also with homes. We've got to worry about that also. So we got to worry about it now before it gets out of hand. Because well, those you, homes down there will be washed away. They're right on that banks. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that information. Is there another speaker? My name is John Shepley, S-H-E-P-L-E-Y. <clears throat> I reside at <clears throat> 4607 Sutley Circle. I was here uh, three and a half years, and, and I agree with uh, many of the previous speakers, but there's just a little bit different aspect I'd like to highlight. And uh, this body voted to put in Outlot B based on concerns raised by the residents for um, the wildlife in that green space and it I think surprised many of the residents of Quail Creek that three years later it was immediately going to be s sold off because during that planning mission uh, commission meeting the idea was it would not be part of the subdivision and wouldn't be developed and that's why we created it and you know three years later it was kind of almost like a promise to the, everyone who was here three years ago and it seems like I personally feel like the promise was kind of broken and I just wanted to share that aspect of it. But thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Dwight Beaton. Um, I live at 4309 Amos Gates Drive, which is a distance away from this. I'm not one of the immediate neighbors that is right in the backyard um, that is coming forward tonight, and I have a little bit of a different view on it. If you will look up at what is designated as Outlot B, um, that is something that the city council did, first of all. It was not this party, it was not this group of people. Um, there were, I believe, three or four members, maybe five members on the city council at the time. Even our own ward council person david sanborn if you check the records you'll find that he voted against putting that outlot b in there was no reason at that time there was no knowledge of how this land was going to be used but if you look up at it you see that it is open a lot of it is open dirt and that is because this aerial view was taken when it was farmed if the hundred foot is left in there there will need to be something put in there because the t when you know yourself when it quits getting tilled under for soybeans and it quits getting tilled under for corn every other year it's one or the other new things are going to come in there um, if you go out to our outlots right now we have outlots in our neighborhood outlots e and outlots d and you talk to joey bachman you will find out that the city is mowing those and attaching liens to those owners properties because there's must thistle in there there's all kinds of vegetation that is non-desirable that goes into those areas. Um, this plan that this developer has proposed is well thought out. It is uh, the next logical step. Um, you know, and I know you you think that's strange to have a resident in here with a whole group of other residents, but I think you need to have a little bit of perspective on why the opposition is there. It's because these people have had 30 to 40 years in some cases without people behind them and now all of a sudden they're gonna build homes behind them. Um, God forbid it would have been Walmart superstores that came in and said they wanted to put a uh, neighborhood mart there or a hog processing plant or anything else. That, I don't know, you know what other things you can put into ag property, but um, I don't see it as a negative. Um, I would like, just for this, uh, the um, interest of uh, future discussion, I would like if the city could put up some type of a traffic count before Quail Drive is opened and let us know how many people are going out of Quail Drive, out of Quail Drive on the corner of Quail and Quail, and then see if whether or not the uh, traffic reduces 
after quail drive is connected through or whether it increases because of my feeling is and I'm not a traffic engineer but a logical person tells you that a lot of those people that go past my house on Amos Gates and go past people's houses on Hunter's Cove are going to leave and go out through this new neighborhood to go to the base because the people in Sutley Circle, Jake Circle, Gow Circle, all those places that are coming by our houses now because there's only one way in and one way out of this neighborhood which some people see as a benefit because they say it keeps crime out. It's really, if something big happened on Quail Drive, I don't know what we would do. I mean, we had a, a fire on Quail Drive that um, they had to close the street one time for a short period of time. And uh, obviously they got it put out so it was okay. But I see nothing wrong with this. I think it's a great plan and I hope it goes through as, it, as it's planned. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to comment on this subject? Good evening. My name is Doug Fix, F-I-X-V-O-U-G. I live at 12010 Quail Drive. I've lived there for the last 23 years. Uh, I do live at the dead end. I bought that house because it is on the dead end. I have two dogs, which I've had permission from the previous owners of the land before the city bought it to run my dogs out there on leash. So I'm definitely against connecting the streets. We never had much of a problem when we were in SID because we didn't have parking on both sides of the street. But since then, the city has come in, took down those and allowed double parking along that street. So now we're no much better than Bella Vista at the end there where it's a one-way traffic. You come up, there's a car parked, you wait for the next car to come. That's how you get in and out of Quail Drive right now. And I don't see any way adding 290 houses south of there that all the traffic from Quail Drive and in the 290 houses that are in there are all going to go south and not jam our neighborhood anymore. I'm in favor of a buffer zone, maybe not uh, 100 feet, but there is land that has trees in it that border that whole northern part of that property. There's a trail that I maintain from the end of Quail Drive down to the next street you plan on opening up. I maintain that trail just mainly for people to walk their dogs, get out there, and basically, you know, a nice place we're not going to get run over. So definitely, uh, it doesn't have to be a 100-foot buffer, but some kind of zone just for the wildlife and just a place where you can walk your dog without having to go from uh, the street into somebody's backyard. Uh, we didn't move there to be downtown uh, Bellevue. We moved out there because it was semi-rural. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Did, did you sign in, did sir? Did you sign in? Thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Fax. You're welcome. Hmm. Hi there, Martin Barch, B-A-R-C-H-E. 4501 Anchor Mill Road. And uh, just want to reiterate or emphasize what uh, Tom from our uh, housing uh, group has said, that those of us that border Outlot B definitely think there is a need for some type of non-developed strip between the developments uh, for just a different, you know, any number of different reasons. Uh, we are willing to compromise. Uh, the developer seems willing to compromise. We would hope that uh, we can come to an agreement on our own, but I would still like to see some type of uh, zoning or um, you know whatever powers that you have <laughs> to keep something undeveloped there. I don't know that I could have articulated this very well, but um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Is there anyone else?
Uh, Madam Chair and members of the council, my name is Bob Huck. I'm a resident of Bellevue at 405 Ridgewood Drive, have been for many years, <laughs> let's just put it that way. And I represent both the developer and the eventual SID that will be here. Legally, uh, I want to point out that the purchase agreement between the city of Bellevue um, and the uh, developer states very clearly that the, um, the property is defined in many ways as outlot this and outlot that and lot one Daniels Farm Edition and so on, but specifically indicates uh, outlot B as part of the property that's being purchased. That's on page one, and uh, on page two, it makes it very clear, seller acknowledges, seller is the city of Bellevue. The purchaser intends to develop the property, and that includes outlot B, into a residential subdivision of detached family, uh, single family homes. And that um, purchaser's obligations and this agreement are contingent upon receipt of all necessary approvals from the city of Bellevue, which uh, agrees to cooperate fully with the developer to work towards a subdivision plan. So legally, the agreement indicates that outlot B and the other mentioned uh, aspects of the real estate uh, will be part of a residential subdivision of detached family, single family homes. And that's exactly what's before you this evening. Um, the uh, northernmost lots of this new subdivision will adjoin the southernmost lots at Quail Ridge, and, or a Quail, is it Quail Creek? Quail Creek. Creek, yes, Quail Creek, and um, uh, backyards against, mainly backyards, which is really a uh, wonderful way of uh, doing things. Uh, lot A is huge, it's 10 point some acres, it exists on the western part uh, that is being purchased as well, where people can go and, and uh, see all the deer they want, turkeys and so on and so forth. And that's the whole purpose of that thing. Some improvements may be made there. Um, the, um, the recommendation report on page five, item nine, talks about this as to the 100 uh, uh, foot wide outlot that it no longer would it serve as a connection to future park ground as once thought? Staff is not in favor of keeping it as a buffer. If it remains undeveloped, it would be difficult to maintain. Good planning practice includes connectivity between neighborhoods. So we would urge approval of the preliminary plat as submitted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huck. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Seeing no one, I'd ask if the applicant would like an opportunity to respond to any of the matters raised by public testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Douglas Streets on 10836 Old Mill Road. Again, appearing on behalf of the applicant. Um, we've, we've had numerous meetings with staff and we've had a, a neighborhood meeting to try to address um, some of the concerns with the neighbors. Um, I think as far as the uh, drainage concerns um, under today's criteria, we're required to only discharge uh, water at a rate that comes off the property um, as it sits today. Uh, the basins, um, they're not, not real easy to see on the, on the documents that we're presenting, but there are basins set up at the low points of the property um, and in the outlots to catch and store uh, high flows from storm events and release them at, the s at a slow rate similar to what's uh, currently occurring. So um, we are aware of Mr. Patterson's concerns and, and we've designed the subdivision in a manner to alleviate those flows uh, and that stuff will all be reviewed by your engineering staff. Um, the traffic calming, I think we've got two, two traffic circles in there to try to break up uh, the long connections into the Quail Creek neighborhood 
and perhaps um, diffuse some of the traffic coming out uh, <coughs> over near the veterans home to give us a second connection to the south. Um, I understand both, our, both sides of the arguments about uh, protection from crime, but it also that comes at a, the expense of convenience in some cases getting in and out. Uh, we'll look at the traffic and, and of course your engineers will look at that too. <coughs> in a neighborhood situation like this, I think this is designed to handle whatever traffic it'll generate. Um, I think you guys have pretty much addressed the outlot issue. That's really not an engineering issue. It's more of a planning and aesthetics uh, situation. Um, we are aware of Mr. Cooser's situation. Um, <coughs> we need to get more information on how that storm sewer system actually works. We're evaluating uh, two or three options to uh, perhaps put him hopefully in a better condition where he doesn't even have to worry about uh, a lot of drainage in his yard. We'd like to divert that um, to a more acceptable area where it can surface flow out of there and we're not relying on a pipe and an inlet to collect all of that water. Um, as we flesh those out, uh, we'll certainly keep you guys in the loop on that. Um, I guess other than that, unless there's some specific questions that you'd like me to address, that's all I have. Madam Chair, can I address a couple things that were mentioned? Um, as uh, Mr. Dreesen said, the, the traffic in Quail Creek, if there are, is a need for traffic control devices, that would come through our public works department rather than this development. Um, One of the things that Mr. Beaton mentioned, he was correct that um, it was the council that voted and put in outlot B on this area. Um, my recollection is that the planning commission recommended that area that is outlot A be separated from the rest of the property uh, and it went to council with the outlot A and then the council um, voted uh, three to three and then the mayor approved it with the uh, to put in outlot B, um, as, like I said, as opposed to what uh, Mr. Shepley said, this is the, the planning commission put it in, um, the council did. Um, and I, I think our comments regarding the buffer are, are well stated in the, the staff report. Uh, we don't see a, a need for that. Um, and I think it would impede traffic flow between the two subdivisions, which is a a component of the subdivision regulations as far as having more than one way in and out of the development. Can you put up the, that one? Um, go back to outlot B, one of the discussion points when the council put that in there was that uh, this area here was shown on this, uh, let's say a land use plan or as a park. Uh, and the idea, the thought though is that <coughs> this area would be connected to the outlot over here with this buffer or wildlife corridor or whatever um, to connect these two pieces of parkland. Uh, this area here is a part of this plat. There's a cul-de-sac that comes down here. So there is not going to be a, a, a park down at this end of the property. So there would be nothing for this uh, buffer yard, you know, or buffer area to connect to. Um, it would come in and, and, and basically go nowhere. It'd probably stop at Quail Drive. So it, one of the purposes that was stated that by the council when they put that in there um, no longer exists. And, and it was cut off because of the, there's a, this drainage area here, there's like a, a 40 foot gully area here. So there, there's not a, a way to connect this piece with the rest of the park area. <coughs> okay. With that, I'm going to close the public hearing and turn it over to the commissioners. 
comments, discussion? I guess question for Mr. Dreesen. As I'm eyeballing this, where Quail Drive comes down and where the other road would connect up, which is Daniel Road, according to the plat here, those would be, what, lots 39 to 46 between there. As I'm eyeballing that with the satellite view, I guess, Mr. Shuchuk, or um, the berm that's under discussion, is that just south of where the cul-de-sac is there? I mean, you can kind of see that dark area. That's correct. I guess walk through to me what, how did that come about, what agreement was made, and again, alternatives that you guys would have that would make productive lots out of it as opposed to avoiding it and leaving the berm as is. Well, Mr. Cooser knows way more about the history of it than I do. Um, so if he's still here, he can jump in at any time. But what I think Mr. happened... Mr. Cooser, would you please come up to the microphone also? <coughs> so you can be heard on the tape should it be needed. Go ahead. What I think happened is there's, a, there's an area that drains back to the north. This property is kind of split. Um, east-west with the ridge down the middle and and most of it drains either east or west but there's a small kind of saddle area right south of that cul-de-sac that actually drains to the north as Mr. Cooser elaborated on earlier he found out that that's right where his house was and that drainage came that way I think <coughs> um, there must have been a problem there before uh, with the farmer and perhaps some erosion similar to the 40-foot uh, deep gully that's there to the southeast. And in that case, uh, there was a proactive approach taken by putting in a storm sewer and so forth. Uh, obviously, it wasn't followed through on because Mr. Cooser got a surprise um, as he just about completed his new house. Um, to address your questions regarding uh, how to deal with that, um, when we engineer for storm drainage, pipe is one thing, but as an engineer, you always think about, well, what if that pipe doesn't work? What we really like to have is a gravity overland flow route that keeps people out of harm's way, that, that doesn't run into... Um, a residential house or flood a basement or create those kind of things. In looking at um, this situation, there's a little outlot there to the west, I guess southwest of Mr. Cooser's cul-de-sac. Um, at the north corner of that outlot, there's a pretty wide area in between houses. Um, that would, that could provide, uh, if we get better information that's an area I want to look at that could provide that overland route where if the storm sewer itself isn't taking the water it overflows and goes down through there in between the houses rather than right into to Mr. Cooser's uh, back foundation. Just for clarification Mr. Shuchek is it that little triangle just south and west of the cul-de-sac is that kind of the that's, that's an outlaw yes so the SID or the homeowner association currently no actually there actually the, actually the outlots interestingly enough are owned by private citizens like mr. Patterson uh, not all of them well um, I think maybe all of them are and I, in and that I, area so I, and I believe this one is owned by the gentleman who lives in that house on that lot no second one in so they, they are privately owned. Okay, thank you. But we do not have, at this point, enough detailed information to say that's an option, but we want to look at that. Um, the other thing that we're doing that I think is a big benefit is as we do the development, the area <coughs> that continued uh, or that, that formerly drained that way gets intercepted by the residential streets and put into a storm sewer and directed, uh, and I'll have to check this, but I think some of it goes down to the east and ultimately ends up in the detention basin that'll be constructed there and discharged then into the big, the currently 40-foot uh, deep gully uh, 
one thing I forgot to mention in our presentation is as part of this development, um, we'll eliminate that hazard. Um, we plan to use that area as a grading balance area and we'll lay those slopes back so our residents and the residents of Quail Creek don't have to worry about one of their adventuresome youngsters uh, falling off that 40 foot bank. Um, does that answer your question? I guess uh, in the event a solution isn't found in terms of the berm, which it sounds like from an engineering standpoint, it's a matter of where you move the water. Correct. Um, worst case scenario, some of these lots, 42, 43, 44, somewhere in there would remain berm. Worst case. We could leave the berm in there. Um, what we'd like to do in that area is, is create walkout lots which would essentially, if you're familiar with those, about the middle of the house um, towards the, the front, the street, which would be to the south, would all drain to the south, and towards the back would all drain uh, to the north and perhaps a little bit to the west. To keep the berm in there, we would look more at making those lots flat lots rather than walkouts, which would allow us to, to tilt the whole lot and drain it to the south and onto the street, essentially eliminating virtually all of the water that comes back towards Mr. Cooser. He'd get a little bit of the future backyards, but not nearly the area that he's seeing right now. So Mr. Cooser, you've been working with Mr. Dreesen and his company all over? Yeah, or to that, that is correct. Uh, they Would you speak to the microphone, I'm, please? I'm sorry. They, they did send an engineer over a couple weeks ago, and we did talk. I know they have some ideas. Again, I'm not against this. Just, just so you understand a little bit about this, there's the berm, and then on the developer's side of the berm is an inlet. So that water right now comes down. It goes in that inlet. It's piped down. That goes underneath the berm and then goes into the inlet that's in my backyard. And so the, the, the water collects, it goes in there, underground and into there, and worked wonderfully for 27 years, and, 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 and it, has worked, it has worked well. Uh, my only concerns of bringing this to your attention is with the covenant, uh, again, I, I, I think I've, kept my part of the bargain with main, the maintenance of this and everything. Naturally, I'd like to see the, the berm as much be maintained. Um, I don't know the legal aspects of the covenant, but I'm also not obstructionist here. I think with Denny and, and these gentlemen, we can get this figured out and hopefully aesthetically it'll be okay in that. But I just think it's necessary for you to have that information. Oh, thank you. Thank and you to both I, of you. I appreciate it. And I have a question for Mr. Dreesen. <coughs> uh, the homes that you're planning on building, can you tell us something about them? Uh, the cost anticipation, you know, what, what would be the quality? Well, with all due respect, I think that's probably a better question for uh, Denny, the developer, okay. the builder. Got a long last name. It takes me a long time to write it. I'm Denny Van Morligan. I live at 3758 South 184th Circle. The house, Doug's holding up a picture of the, of the houses that we currently build. Okay, the, the houses in this subdivision we expect to be between two hundred and sixty and four hundred thousand uh, dollars. The, the footages will be sixteen hundred to four thousand square feet, depending how you count it. Okay. We're placing a high emphasis. These, these are not first time buyer houses. They're first time move up or second time move up. So everybody needs a three car garage. We maybe sell two houses out of 60 a year with a two car garage. So we're trying to design the, the streetscape. We'll have a whole new different product line of houses for the subdivision. 
and to make it look like a true neighborhood. So um, you can see, I guess to draw a parallel, some of the newer houses at uh, Clearwater Falls or Cedar Grove or in some of the later generation houses at Lakewood Villages is what we plan to replicate, okay? Now there's three builders that are part of this LLC, Sherwood Homes, who's been around for 50 years, Regency Homes, we've been around for 55, and Horizon Home has been around for 30 years. And so we're going together to try to try to put this subdivision together. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I don't have any. Does anyone else have one for Mr. Ben? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just a quick question for staff regarding the RS-72 PUD versus the RS-72 zoning. Um, on this north strip of lots, since the big concern seems to be the separation between the homes between the north and the, on the north side of this development and the south side of the other, the, was there any thought given to just leaving a strip of RS-72 zoning through there to keep that back, that rear set back at 35 feet versus reducing it to the 25 feet you get with the PUD? So that would give a 70-foot corridor between homes that would be some sort of vegetation for wildlife versus a it's only a 60-foot corridor. It would be a 60-foot corridor now, but that would increase that separation slightly. I'm, I'm going to say I'm not sure you can call, call it a corridor. People are going to be, you know, probably fencing and uh, have, have a nice lawns rather than... True, but it doesn't seem to slow the deer down in my yard. No. So. <laughs> uh, and... Coyle Creek is going to have a, a 25 foot anyway. Um, no, um, really, I, I think their their main intention, or main reason for the the RS 72 PUD, is their side yard setback. Um, trying to get that getting that down from five or from seven to five to accommodate the homes with the the three car garages. Okay. Thanks. I have just a few questions for staff uh, concerning park issues. Uh, is there any requirement uh, for this development to uh, dedicate property for park purposes? Um, we, we discussed that, staff. That the subdivision regulations do have a, uh, there's a park section on that. However, with the area to, to the east of here being um, plan for a, a significant community, uh, maybe regional type park. Uh, there was not, we did not see a need for having a, a small piece of park ground in here. The, the uh, developer will be required to contribute uh, to the park development fund. Um, that number in here. Number uh, eight. And, and, you know, 70, more than $75,000 to the park development fund. And, and going back to the smaller parks, the, the park department you know, prefers having bigger parks rather than these small neighborhood parks that are uh, a maintenance uh, issue for them. So with, with the proximity to the planned park, you do not uh, require the, or ask for the park in, actually within the subdivision. And where would that regional park be located in relation to this proposed development? It, it, it's on the screen right now. We, we, okay. This. Uh, it's what we're looking at is probably this area here uh, between the trees. Um, depending upon how the rest of this ultimately develops, there's, there, there's possibly more area down here. But this is the principal area that would be left as park, uh, uh, an open area, and then a lot of treat areas that uh, potentially have trails. Um, there, we've talked with the NRD, and, and, and it's been a while since we've talked to the NRD about this putting some sort of small dam structure to have a, a water type feature in there and whatnot. So. And, but, and originally as the city platted this property, that, that area that we talked about, or that you talked about, I'm sorry, and that's mentioned in the staff report that talks about uh, how the need for that being included in this regional park has, uh, and correct me if I'm phrasing this incorrectly, but the need for that to be included in this proposed regional park no longer exists because of that drainage way. Well, it, th th this area, 
That is an, an up to a 40 foot ditch, gully, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and separating, you know, having all of this park, this little bit separated from the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't seem to make sense to have a, um, a, a piece or almost a remnant piece out there by itself when, you know, lot, you know if this were developed just like this, the, the road would probably go straight down, there'd be a line of houses there. Mm -hmm. There would not be a, a connection between the two. So um, when, when the developer and the council negotiated what they were buying or the city would sell to, to the developer, this piece came into the, the purchase agreement mm -hmm. for, for him to buy. And I assume that drainage way existed when the city platted that piece of property be included? Yes. In the park. And, and I'll say that, you know, the, the extent, you know, this is something that we, more schematic type thing. Um, and I'll say that I didn't know that the extent of this goalie at the time. So as, as the, the development and land use is refined, this is the type of refinement we're getting where, where the development comes over here does not cross the, the ditch area the, the park does not cross the ditch to the north and so that refinement took place as part of the process under which the city is selling the property yes and and then of course I think as mr. Huck mentioned uh, the closing with that purchase agreement is contingent on the necessary approvals being I, I, I have I haven't been a part of the negotiations that have been done in executive session with the council, um, but typically that is the the way things are agreed to. Um, that nobody wants to buy anything if they're they're not going to get approved for it. Yeah, so. Of course, of course. So the the planning department had played no role in those negotiations. I think. correct. Thank you. Got a quick question for you. Uh, there's note of under the technical def deficiencies from the Public Works Engineering dated November 12th. What were some of the items, or what was what was that? Public Works Manager Dean Dunn had a comment in response to a curve C15. It was a K value. And so he made reference. That's why I didn't list that in the report, because okay. to most of us, that doesn't mean anything. In the engineering world, obviously it does. But that's something that has been addressed with Mr. Dreesen and his staff. So. He could probably explain he could probably explain it to you if he wanted him to. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Question for staff, I guess on the, if the application is Paysetter Homes and not the city as the property owner, Mr. Van Morgan, I assume you own the land at this point? Or is the land still to close? It's, it's going to close. There, there's a purchase agreement um, and we, we, we've been, we always operate under the provision that uh, if there is a, a, a purchase agreement then the proposed purchaser has an interest in the property and, and can make the application thank you I have a question for uh, staff and perhaps it will for I'll try staff first is um, in the application I note that um, this is going to be developed as a sanitary improvement district this will be one sanitary improvement district although it's going to be constructed in four phases is yes. the, kind of the plan going forward. So the entire infrastructure will be built out initially and then you'll phase, four phases is the intention to build the actual construction. I, I think, if, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the phases are, are shown, this is phase one coming up um, from Capehart Road. So, so this area here will be phase one 
that would be constructed and the infrastructure would be constructed. And then moving on to phase two, uh, the, infrastructure, the infrastructure would be constructed in phases as well. Okay. So basically with the construction of phase one, the residents of Quail Creek, which I've uh, jogged your neighborhood many times over the years, uh, will have plenty of time to uh, notice any changes in traffic and get with uh, City of Bellevue staff to address any traffic issues outside of the SID. As this gradually builds out, they'll have plenty of time to communicate any traffic issues they see to be able to address. I, I think so, since that, that road will be connected as part of right. phase one. And, and as much as I hate losing a single entry to a neighborhood, I as uh, part of a neighborhood much like that, the other thing I would offer to you is it also gives you another emergency <coughs> vehicle entrance. And that's uh, not to be discounted on certain types of bad weather. Are there any other comments or questions from the commissioners? I guess one question, uh, and this is kind of a, a tangent to, to everything here as far as the circulation through Quail Creek, but the status of 36th Street, when that happens, that may affect some of the traffic patterns through these areas if this develops and how it's all tied into Quail Creek. And I guess it goes back to the phasing that you're looking at as far as you know, trying to work through the, the uh, subdivision and uh, on how all that time is timed. What is the, the timing on 36th Street that, that you know of right now? Um, I, I don't believe construction is even scheduled probably until 2017. <coughs> okay. I know that uh, our public works engineer and director had a meeting with Federal Highways, I think it was Monday, um, and the issue there is getting Federal Highway approval of the environmental report, um, which has really been what's holding things up for three years. Um, so once they get that approval, they can go to final design and right away acquisition, um, which will probably take a year. So it would probably be almost a year and a half, you know, counting the winter time to, to get in there and, and start construction. Okay. If, um, if this does move forward and uh, 36th Street moves forward, I, I do see some potential traffic congestion and going through Quail Creek, you know, if 36th and Capehart is closed down or or choked down it to some degree, just people trying to find the, the easiest way to get around and, and out through construction. Well, ho hopefully the, the, the you know, well, first of all, it would be a temporary matter well, during the construction time. Um, I, I would guess that a lot of this traffic is going to and from the base, um, mm -hmm. going up to 370, getting into, getting into Quail Creek off of 370 would be, probably be the, the best alternative. Um, I, I would, I'm going to say I would doubt that the intersection of 30, or you know, just personal, thing, I doubt the intersection of 36 and k would, would, wouldn't it's shut, shut down. down. Right, but it's uh, going to be problems. Yeah. Yeah. Problems now, so. Yeah. <laughs> One additional uh, question, if I might, if you're done with uh, that topic, <coughs> is um, help me out with a little bit uh, in terms of timing, in terms of what triggers street lighting to be put in on Capehart Road and 36th Street? as this builds out and we get more residential traffic trying to turn onto that curved road or up and down 36th Street. Is it actually the widening of those roads or what's the trigger point to put additional lighting out there? I, I can say I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think if the city wanted to have it put in now, you know, obviously they would just request OPPD to do it and we would do it or you would do it, uh, OPPD would do it. Um, I'm going to say probably the Construction widening of, of 36th Street would result in street lights being installed as well as sidewalks on 36th Street. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. So, what are the wishes of the commission? <coughs> I'd like to ask one more question oh, of the, the sorry. staff, and I'm, I'm at the risk of beating a dead horse here. Outlot B, do I understand it correctly? The, the city uh, agreed that to leave that, to put that in place. And now that's being sold with the understanding there won't be that outlaw. Is that correct? Yes. And are there any legal, is, was, are there legal ramifications to that, making that change? I don't know if you can answer no. that. In, in my, my legal opinion, <laughs> it, it, you know, uh, and obviously I'm not a lawyer for everybody else, um, would be no. You know, the, the city could have put a covenant or a restriction on, on outlaw B. Um, but they didn't, and it was even mentioned, um, I was looking at the minutes from the council meeting, 
um, back in it was 2012 when when this went through, and uh, the, the city attorney advised against putting an actual covenant on there just to so it wouldn't tie anybody's hands in the future. My memory of that, if I may, is 2012 was an election year. <laughs> there were a lot of people showed up at the city council to discuss that. And uh, that's when the outlaw was created. And as Mr. Huck indicated, if you go back to the original plan, when the city decided to sell this 200 plus acres, they kind of came up with this design and it did not include that strip until the public came out the night that it was being discussed and it was created. And just as lines on a map are created, they can be changed later on when something's actually gonna come in, which is what's now happening. So certainly the residents here can make your voice known to the city council if the lines get changed here tonight or recommended for change, but that's my memory of the history on that. So with the, the purchase agreement in place, and pretty much voiding outlot B, uh, it would be basically up to the goodwill of the developer if they wanted to provide any type of buffer yard, essentially. Yes, and 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 as was mentioned by, um, well, first, first of all, we we would not be in support of a, a buffer yard that did away with the connections to the street. Mm -hmm. um, we feel those are very important to have, um, and as one of the people mentioned, I don't remember. You, you do a buffer yard like that, it ends up being, I think it was, I don't know, Mr. Beaton, you know, overgrown, um, uh, not taken care of, and it, it gets, would get to be a, a problem, I believe. Just one quick question for staff. Uh, the staff report mentions that the comprehend, comprehensive plan designates all of this property, I believe, um, as medium density residential. Um, <coughs> Is there any of that property that was designated for park purposes in the plat? Is that included in this development? We, we, I'm, I'm going to, um, without looking at the comp plan, um, the the comp plan, the future land use, it probably mirrors or very much reflects. The, the map we had up earlier um, based on the zoning of the property. Thank you. There's no further discussion. I'd be prepared to make a motion. Mr. Ackley. <clears throat> I would move that we approve the requested action of rezoning lots 1 through 292 and out lots B through D Liberty from AG and RS 72 to RS 72 PUD for the purpose of single family residential development and also recommend approval of preliminary lots 1 through 292 and out lots B through D of Liberty for the reasons that it does conform with the comprehensive plan and also complies with our zoning regulations and subdivision regulations and compatibility with the adjacent residential development. I'll second that. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Commissioners, please vote. Vote is seven to one, motion carries. Okay, that ends our uh, public hearings for this evening. This, oh, I'm go? sorry, this will go before the City Council January 11th, 2016.